Now, the two shows last night, a very quick rundown. Best Friends in Jurassic Express versus Inner Circle was a good match, but I was expecting it to be a much better match, which was kind of the story of the show. Cody versus Warhorse, it was fine. Never became that great match like we saw last week. We had Omega and Hangman versus the Dark Order for the tag team titles, which was pretty good, but it was not a Omega Hangman tag team title match the likes of which we have seen in the past. Hikaru Shida versus Diamante actually was not very good. It started out okay, and then, boy, did it fall off a cliff. We had an MG, uh, MGF State of the Union address, State of the Industry address. He's, he's campaigning for the role as the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. It'll be him and John Moxley coming up on September 5th for All Out for the title. And this was actually, it was so bizarre because it was almost like Raw. They do a segment where MJF challenges John Moxley for the title. It's going to be on the pay-per-view shortly after SummerSlam. And then just like on Raw, after the main event, they randomly announced that number five Darby Allen will be facing John Moxley for the title on television next week. No build, no nothing. It's just... That's next week, everybody. So, that was weird. And that match ended with Darby pinning Ricky Starks after stomping on him with his skateboard full of thumbtacks, tearing his back apart. And that's not even an exaggeration. Like, the the thumbtacks went into his back, and then the skateboard slid down his back and ripped him open from shoulder blade to shoulder blade. He's bleeding everywhere. That was too much for me. And for NXT, we had Tegan and Io versus Dakota and Candice. They're building up Dakota Kai as allegedly the next challenger to Io Shirai. So what happened? Dakota's team lost. Don't ask me, dude. We had Gargano and Strong, two heels. They wrestled a babyface match, and Gargano beat him clean in the middle. Great match, but that was bizarre. We had Mercedes Martinez squashing Shotzi Blackheart. Keith Lee has challenged... Karrion Cross to pick a time and place for the title, although Regal is now saying, ah, I make those decisions. Don't bully me. And then Swerve Scott beat Jake Atlas. The match was was fun. That's to set up a, a Cruiserweight title match. And finally, in the main event, in a match that was a rib from start to finish, which the announcers even noted, who put these these three people together? Dexter Loomis... Finn Balor, Timothy Thatcher, they have a three-way that pay, play to nobody's strengths. It was like, I can't even say it was a letdown because I had no expectations. But it wasn't very good. And in the end, Dexter Loomis choked out Timothy Thatcher to win the match via submission. I give up. I give up. I don't know what is going on with Dexter Loomis. I don't get it. I have no idea what the idea is here. Like, I I realize you, you need to build new stars, but dude, in that whole NXT roster, the guy doesn't even talk, so he's not in the top echelon of talkers. He's definitely not in the top echelon of workers. I don't get it. He doesn't appear to be over. I mean, I get one email every four weeks saying I like this Dexter Loomis character. It's over my head. I'm flabbergasted, but that's what they did. Do you like the theme music at least? No, bro. What's the gimmick here with Dexter Loomis? What's going on? Like, usually there'll be some random guy that Triple H pushes, but you can figure out why because, you know, he looks like a young Triple H. He's got long hair. He's all jacked up or whatever. Dexter Loomis is like... I swear to God, he is a cross between nails. Oh, wait. Come on. No, he is, dude. He plays the nails character. That's what the guy is. I thought more of a quiet Waylon Mercy. Bro, none of these guys got over. (laughs) Not one of them. (laughs) Triple H, like, are you telling me that when he was in WCW, his Terror Horizon, like he was watching the other show and he went, ha, (laughs) that nails guy. Oh, man, if I could ever be like him someday. If I'm ever a booker, man, I'm going to make my own nails. And he's going to run the show. <laughs> like, what is going on here, honestly? You, you make your own nails and you're going to hammer them over. Um, Look, could this just be, and I know, look, I, I know, 
could this just be since Damian Priest and Oni Lorcan and Rich Holland is in the the next match? And I don't. And I would. I'm guessing Damian Priest is going to come out of of that one. Which I don't know why you would debut Rich Holland and not have him win. But to me, it would make more sense to have Damian Priest go ahead and win that. Is it just to have? good bases when you have other people that then qualify for this ladder match that you have two big guys do you think possibly you know what i think it is you know what i think it is i think what it is is it's for the nxt north american title and so everybody in the ladder match is going to be like a mid card or upper mid card guy and there won't be any stars in there it'll be all about the secondary guys fighting for the secondary title. Which, I mean, if that's your idea, I guess that's fine. Like, Dexter Loomis is in there, and Bronson Reed is in there. and But is it the upper division or what you want to perceive it to be of that second? Then? No, the secondary, only... the secondary title should be, like, almost on par with the world title. It should be well, stars course, holding it. It should be. Well, it should be. That's Look, we, I grew up with the U.S. title and the Intercontinental title, and those titles actually meaning something. And the North American title I should be in that same vein. I mean, look what Cody... Cody's got a different situation with the TNT title, but at least that's taking on the spirit of Arn Anderson defending the TV title every single week. So I get that. And I think the North American title should be special. They have they have made it incredibly not special over the last couple of, of months and weeks. The way Keith Lee decided to kind of toss it to the side to let everybody have a chance at it. And I guess that's what this is. Everybody gets a shot at the North American title. It just doesn't make it, you know, it does, doesn't make it very exciting. And then you've qualified, <laughs> you qualify uh the the former uh what was his name in tna sam, sam shaw. shaw the former he sam didn't get shaw, over a sam shaw i look, mean the uh, look look the look actually it, it just on first glance you go well that's a unique looking guy and he's a big guy and i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the look the presentation sucks if he was a psychopath and had a psychopath manager like a gary hart or something like that the thing would be over far better but they haven't done that he's a starving artist he's whatever he's he a is. cartoonist it, it, it but that's the thing it's a cartoon what? and that's the biggest problem is this is one big cartoon and it sucks